probably don't like following up Tony Hawk. Should have gone before. Okay, so I have videos. That just keeps it more engaging, I think. Uh, thanks for having me. This is like the real tough slot. You guys had lunch, started to kick in. So I'm between you and coffee is me. So let's, let's try and see if I can bring some caffeine to the mix here. So what am I here to talk about? Apparently building iconic brands. I've been lucky to be part of some incredible food and beverage products. I don't do many things well, and I learned that some time ago. I got fired a couple of times, and then I figured out that there's only a few things I do well, and I stick with it. But I've been part of building brands like Vitamin Water, Smart Water, Vitacoco, Buy, and Pop Chips. And I thought about why I got into those brands and why I do what I do. And it kind of starts with the fact that today, I don't care if you are tall, short, white, black, male, female, everybody across the board wants to feel better about themselves. It's a, it's a basic universal trait. And that starts with what you put on and in your body. Everyone loves to work out, but they say, you know, abs are made in the kitchen. I'm still waiting for mine to kick in, but um, <laughs> it's Indian genetics, people. It's not that great. Um, but we're great at business. So, um, so for me, that's where it starts. And everybody out there is looking to feel better about themselves. And with the advent and access of information that we have today, I don't care if you're in Des Moines or Manhattan, you're still getting the same information. And so you're still looking for the same products. It's why Whole Foods sales in, in any part of the country does well, because that audience is looking for products that are better for you. But the problem is, the food pyramid today is upside down. Everyone knows that today, we should be eating high protein, high good fats, apparently fat is okay, high, bless you, um, high fiber. Instead, you go to the stores today and what do you see? You see high sh sugar, high carbs, high fructose corn syrup, highly processed. Literally, if you walk down the aisles today in a grocery store, it's upside down. It's, by the way, why Amazon and Bezos are brilliant, they didn't buy the traditional grocery stores, they bought Whole Foods. It gave them instant credibility in the grocery world, and now the beauty is you can get products directly to consumers as e-commerce and grocery explodes. But the aisles today are old and ripe for disruption. When cheese can last six years on the shelf, maybe it's not cheese. <laughs> I won't mention the brand because I hope some of these companies buy my brand, so <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. And so this disruption in what is a trillion dollar category, when you combine all this stuff together, is why I feel that America is the greatest place to be an entrepreneur. Because all the big food and beverage ideas, by the way, good and bad, um, start here, and then get adopted across the globe. And I think that as an entrepreneur here, it's part of the DNA and spirit of this country. Everything that's huge today started with an entrepreneur, and that that's more apparent today in food and beverage than ever before. Because these entrepreneurs become the innovation incubators for corporate America. So I love the big corporations in America because I have maintained great relationships with them because I feel that we're not in competition, we're simply incubating ideas that they can buy. Because for big companies to start with small brands, have an original idea, and then nurture it, and then get it out and have the same passion that a founder like Ben Weiss from Buy, or Darius from Vitamin Water, or Justin's from Justin, it's very difficult. And it's not their fault. They're not designed for that. They're designed for you know, moving a lots of cereals and big boxes and Frosted Flakes, or they're designed to move Pepsi and Coca-Cola. They're not designed to create the next Vitamin Water, or Buy, or Bulletproof, or Blue Bottle, because that requires a passionate founder. So to me, the, the landscape today for entrepreneurs, and a lot of you are obviously entrepreneurs in this room, is phenomenal because we should be the innovation incubators. Corporate America should let us build the brands of tomorrow, which is what millennials are looking for. They're not eating and drinking the brands of 30 years ago. They're looking for the brands of tomorrow and to redefine what they put into their system. And I think that's why this makes this time very exciting as we build the brands of tomorrow. So what does it take to build a brand? First, I had an interview earlier, and Tyler asked me, can you make any brand hot? And the answer is no. I mean, 
I can't, maybe others can, but I don't think you can, because you have to start with a product that works. And for me, I feel that my marketing skills are decent, my brand building skills are decent, but my best skill is probably my gut. It's slowly going down. But the, the reason is I, I want tasty products, but I want the nutritionals of the back to also be good. Before, you'd go down the grocery store with your cart, oh, Frosted Flakes, soda, Velveeta. You go down and just knock it into your thing. Now, you grab it, and the first thing you do is turn it around. What's in this? Why should I have it? And I think that what made Buy Great was the fact that when you tried it, and then you looked at the back and you're like, one gram of sugar? No way. It's too effing good to be true. And when you have a product that's too effing good to be true, then it's a billion dollar brand. So it starts with a product that tastes great, but is then better for you. Packaging. In the clutter that you see in stores today, make sure your packaging breaks through. There's brands that have done no celebrity, hardly any marketing, but the packaging comes out and it starts to fly off the shelf. Two brands that we got involved in at Carvu, one is One Bar. The packaging on the left-hand side is the original packaging. By the way, the product is unbelievable. It's another one of these too good to be trues. It's 20 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and eight grams of fiber. I have one every day, but the, I never bought it at the beginning because the packaging was horrible. And my business partner will tell you that. He created it, but he created a lights out product in the process. We together created that new package. The minute that new package hit the shelf, the brand started doubling in sales. Same product. The velocity's doubled because the package pops off the shelf. The same thing with Skinny Dip. Breezy has an amazing product. It's almonds thinly covered in chocolate. Women love it, guys don't get it. But the premise is, <laughs> it's generally the case with most of my brands, by the way. Um, Women get to CPG brands before guys all the time. Um, but what happens is it, it's the nutritionals, five, six, seven, five grams of fiber, six grams of sugar, seven grams of protein, is amazing because the chocolate is thin. It tastes like chocolate, but the, nutri the nutritionals are almonds. Packaging was horrible. We redid the packaging. She's done no marketing. All we've done is put the brand on shelf, and she went from a brand that was zero sales last year or hardly any, to a brand that's gonna do over $4 million in sales this year. That's pretty good for you know, a lady with no background or experience. Her and her mom had a vision. They wanted to create better for you dessert type on the go snacks, and she did it with Skinny Dipped. So packaging makes a massive impact. You don't always have to have celebrity, despite what my video said. Although I'll show you about that as well. And then great people. As entrepreneurs here, there's a great, there's an important element to passion and the passion that you guys need to have because the signal for the company's energy is taken from the founder. So whether it's the brilliance of a guy like Dave Asprey who literally biohacked himself, lost 150 pounds, is in great shape now and has now basically pioneered the whole good fat movement with Bulletproof or Jody who is driving clean hydration because everything she wants to do has to start from a, a natural and original source versus certain sports drinks that put quite unnatural stuff in there. Um, but she inspires that principle in the company, or Dinah, who is driving the whole passion with gut health on health aid. All these three founders have their own unique passion and own unique mission, but everybody in the company takes a signal from them. If you are not 100% 110% engaged, dedicated, passionate, and communicating with your people, that won't be infectious, and then you won't have a company whose culture can break through. So that, those are the three simple elements, product, package, people, but I kind of want to explain the importance in this, in this era. And especially on product, a lot of people ask, well, how do you know what's good for millennials? I'm like, because they're looking for better products in their portfolio. They're looking to eat and drink stuff that's better, and it's not that complex. If you find a better product and put it in a good package, you will connect with that audience. So I have a few mantras that I've come, come along, along the way for you guys if you'd like to hear them. The first one I love is everything is niche until it's not. How many of you have heard that, oh, that's a niche idea? Because, and my feeling is, everything's niche until it's not. Vitamins and water was really niche when I joined. And then $4 billion later, it wasn't. Buy was niche when I got there, and it's like botanical antioxidant infusion, please, what the hell is that? A billion seven later, buy was not niche. So if you have an idea and 
you like what you're doing, then keep driving it home. And I feel that you should defy the experts. Because a lot of people write about the news. Very few people actually make the news. Your role in this room is to make the news. Ironic we're in a news broadcasting place. But, um, <laughs> but if you want to make the big box, you make the news. And that requires defying experts because people who thought that coconut water that maybe tasted like smelly feet wasn't going to be big. And Vitacoca will do over half a billion dollars in sales. It's because people were looking for more natural hydration to the multi-billion dollar brands that were, that were putting it out there. So defy the experts and trust your gut. And then once you have a great product and you have a great package, you have a passionate team, you've told the experts to go to hell and you believe in yourself, how do you then build a buzz around your brand? Because to go from a good brand to a great brand, you then have to start becoming part of pop culture. So it starts with influencing the influencer. One in 10 Americans influences the other nine. Obvious stat, you can look it up in any book. The key is how do you find that one in 10? Well, celebrities are easy. Top of the food pyramid, you know everybody on this list. Whether it's Beyonce invested in watermelon water or David Ortiz invested in Chef's Cut, Madonna and Vitacoca, the list goes on. The celebrities are big, and if you have an authentic celebrity, it works. To me, a lot of people feel you can grab a celeb, slap them on a brand, and it's going to work. Does not work that way. I don't want to name some brands, but some major celebrities have gone on some beverages, and they haven't taken off, because you don't need a celebrity to save your brand. You need a celebrity to turbocharge your brand. So I never go in very early with a celebrity partner until the brand is ready to take off. And then you bring them in to turbocharge it. But it's just not about the top of the pyramid with celebrities. You need to fill out the other two. The middle section are what I call the Insta rock stars and the Digirati. It's the bloggers, it's the Insta, it's people who have huge followings on social media, but followings that are credible, not followings just because, you know, you take a lot of clothing off. I'm saying like fo following where they have millions of fans for a reason who are looking to be educated or edutained, educated and entertained at the same time by them. And then let's not forget the local community. At the local community, you're talking about your alpha moms, your mommy bloggers and groups. Let's not forget that, because that, that group, that word of mouth is very powerful to make or break a brand. So when you get influencers like Hungry Girl or Wellness Mama, who people look to, they won't buy into your products, by the way. There's no way that a Mountain Dew is going to get on that site. But I mean, that yellow dye is dodgy in itself. But um, they will find products that are the brands of tomorrow. So if you connect with these influencers, and you bring the brands of tomorrow. Yes, I'm sure there's some exchange in some capacity because everyone has to make something, but they have to believe in your brands. And their audience then believes in what they present. So you need that middle section along with the influencers who are the celebrities at the top because that gives you the full gamut. And then it's about what you do with it. So Justin Timberlake is an owner and buy. He's, he's one of the most brilliant celebrities I've worked with. He really gets the brand. He understood the vision that Ben painted for Buy. He loved the product, and he wanted to become an owner of the company. And so we created an ad, and Justin was part of it. But it's almost like he's, he's acting like an owner. He's not acting like the endorser. And the, the brand became, the ad became pretty big on Super Bowl. We just run the ad now. I don't want to make it tough. I just want to tell you that I've had enough. It might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie, baby. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Five calories, no artificial sweeteners, and tastes amazing. Bye. Bye, bye. So it's a creative way. Justin says nothing. He's the main investor and owner, you know, he's in the company, he said nothing. Christopher Walken did all the work, but you, and that stands out. So you see that, and everyone's seen this, and said, Ro, I love that buy ad. I actually had nothing to do with that ad. I'm taking credit for a year, but this is the one I, I, I didn't have any. I, someone just phoned me and said, what do you think? I said, fantastic, the idea is great. So I think you've got to be creative. And then when I, when I partnered with a rapper who'd been shot nine times <laughs> on, on a brand, that was very medicinal. Like, well, why did you do 50 in vitamin water? I'm like, well, vitamin water was a great product. It was half the sugar of sodas. It had vitamins in it. The packaging was cool, but very medicinal. And 
And the problem is, how do you get a medicinal product? People are like, vitamins and water, that can't taste good. So we have to find a way to disrupt it. And I worked in the hip hop world, and the two guys that I really liked, this is 2005, who were at the top of their game, were 50 and Jay. And I just didn't have Jay's number. So, um, <laughs> nah, I'm joking, Fifth. Um, and so my friend Seth Rodsky, New 50, we connected, the three of us got together, and we created the whole equity model. And we didn't create it strategically. I actually give 50 more credit than, than, I, than, I, than I take for this one. I had no money, I was a tiny brand, and I'm like, bro, I can't pay you what you're worth. And he goes, don't worry, just give me skin in the game, I've got the rest. And he told me, wait till next summer when my tour gets going, and you'll see what happens. And I have no idea what he's talking about. And literally the tour took off, 50 became an owner in the company, and Vitam Water took off. But it's the way that 50 was an owner in the brand that's more unique and different. It wasn't in a more expected fashion. So we'll run the ad and show you. Welcome to a televised performance of the National Symphony. We'll be hearing Beethoven's Ninth, and the conductor, Shimizu Matsuka, will be replaced by a relative newcomer, Curtis Jackson, also known as the rapper, 50 Cent. He says he's always loved the work of Beethoven, and often thinks of him as a true OG. Kept so busy by his recording career, it hasn't felt up to trying this. But since he began drinking vitamin water Formula 50, he feels he's up to the task. One more change, this one for the first viola chair, DJ Who Kid. <laughs> Sounds like he's integrated his hit into club. Extraordinary. And now he's calling out the trombonist for a solo, which is great because they'd been rumored to have Pete before the show. Vitamin water, try it. So, thanks. When you do creative, be creative. Because just because you have a big name, you've got to find a way to break through. And I think that's what makes the difference. But it doesn't always have to be a celebrity. On Buy, before Justin became an owner, the big thing was all about out of home. And so, you know, flavor so fresh you could slap it. You know, you drive by, you've only got five seconds on an ad. And how many times do you guys see ads out there where they try to put the entire, you know, story of the dangers of Cialis on the actual ad? Like, it's, it's, <laughs> you can't read more than seven words or eight words, so you gotta be quick. Rodeo dry flavor, yard sale calories. <laughs> all you think is, oh, what's that? That's all you need is, what's that? Because when you go to the store, when you go online, you drop it into your basket because it's given you that impulse purchase. The 70% of the impulse purchase, it's now in your head and buy starts leading you that way. And your, your creative has to be impactful. Even if the headlines mean, here, the, the product we talked about earlier explodes off the, show, off, off the screen. So, you know, glazed and amused, tough cookies only, indulgent bliss, eyes in the pies. So all you have to see is 20 grams of protein, one gram of sugar. That's all the time you have, but if the ad's proud and impactful, you walk away and you buy it. And then you can get a little more creative, potentially, if you want to be risque. So, Vitamin Water came out back in the day, and I want to talk about Vitamin Water Essential. Start your morning with this. It's got half the calories of orange juice, all the nutritionals and the, and the vitamin C. So we ran a sunset billboard uh, years ago. Headline was, OJ found guilty uh, of being too high in sugar. But who can see the, of being too high in sugar? It's like, it's in the mouse font. So we had like helicopters flying around the billboards and capturing this thing. It went out to like 100 markets across the country. So it was an interesting creative play on pretty much orange juice. But obviously it tapped into something that was relevant within pop culture. So when you want to push the creative envelope, give it a crack because that's what lets your brand break through. And then the last part I would say is, I don't believe in brand managers, I believe in brand messiahs. So as you build your organizations and companies, make sure people use your product. Make sure people are passionate about the brand. I once interviewed a guy, I was actually a Coke and I was interviewing him for Powerade, and he was a brand manager on Tampax. I was just flummoxed, I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand, what do you do with it? Like, how is it, what, how, he's clueless on his product. So, so I, don't, I believe, and you know, big companies like to do a rotation program. It does not work as an entrepreneur. Be passionate about your products and use it. 
So be the brand, don't market your brand. And in the end, follow your gut. It all boils down to following your gut. As an entrepreneur, every successful entrepreneur starts with a gut feel about an idea, a gut feel about people, a gut feel about his vision or her vision. And in the end, if you follow your gut, it'll get you to the promised land. Thank you. All right, don't run off. I want to ask you a question. You, I, I, no, I did. I thought you were going to be here longer. Yeah, I really no. did. Make it snappy. They I was coffee. back uh, drinking a buy. Yeah, I promise. It was a buy. It was a buy. Um, I love that. As I told you on TV earlier, I laugh every time I see. It's good. One. Number one, I laugh every time I see Christopher Walken. <laughs> That's but true. I, but but it was it was really good. You had a lot of wonderful products up there. You got package, people, product. How do you know, as an entrepreneur? when it's time to pull the plug on something that isn't working. Pull the plug you on a You're really trying to get me to figure out which my... I want to know which ones aren't going to work. No, so, how do you know when it's time to move on? Um, I, I've had a couple of losses. I'm, in baseball terms, I'm batting 800. Not bad in That's baseball. That's pretty good. But uh, I think when you... Ri <laughs> you've got to back the right product and the right leader. And I think that you can change out the leader sometimes if your product's great. But if your product's terrible, it doesn't matter who runs it, you're not going to get there. But I think that when you start realizing that regardless how much money you're putting in, the person running the place is a little cuckoo, um, you have to pull the plug. And I think a lot of people keep putting good money after bad in the hope that it'll turn around. And I think at some point when you see the numbers flatlining, not nationwide, in the best markets that you have, and there's not a repeat purchase, and the person running the show, who might be a founder, doesn't fundamentally get it, Boom. jump off the ship. Let me ask you another thing. When you're working on one of these projects, the, uh, products the, or projects, uh, you say you have to be the brand. You've made a lot of money. When you're doing these jobs, do you ever think about the money, or do you only think about the mission? I, I think about the money at the end. When I'm building the brand, it's all about the mission. Because I'm, I'm a believer in the field of dreams, build it and they will come. If you're focused on the money at every stage, you start making bad decisions. If you're focused on building a great brand, obviously, I'm not stupid, at the end of it, I start calculating what I can make. But if you calculate at the beginning, you're going to go sideways. I yeah. think you have to believe in your brand and your mission. And then at the end, sure. The money will follow. Yes. The money will follow. Rohan, thank you. Thank you. Great Pleasure. to see you. Really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Rohan Oza. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.